almost everybody you're going to hear about is trying to raise money for an app of some sort, right? People have software-based businesses. It's usually one to five guys that are trying to develop something cool. Uh, and in many cases, are developing something very cool. Uh, but they're relying on infrastructure. Um, what infrastructure are they relying on? Well, for me, um, I'm not an app developer. I'm, I'm a very not okay coder, but um, I'm an infrastructure guy. I have a cybersecurity background. I worked in IT, and I've always worked in infrastructure in whatever industry I've, I've decided to be in. So uh, for me, I looked at Bitcoin now 11 years ago. I started my first mining operation in 2013 because uh, I looked at that and said, okay, if this is successful, I want to be... I want to be the guy that like owns the plumbing contract for New York City circa 1700 or something, right? So it's for me, that's always the, I'm a partner in all of your businesses. If you are building something in BSV, thanks for being my customer. So um, me again. So what, what is mining? What does this look like? Like, What does the network actually look like? What is it doing? So uh, top left here, you broadcast from your wallet. Your wallet will broadcast a transaction to... Nodes. What is a node? Well, those nodes, uh, like I said on BTC, was your, your mom's computer she doesn't know you're mining on. Uh, but in BSV, is very much uh, typically a data center. And then we have our ASIC farms, which we now have, I think, seven ASIC farms now around the country, uh, which are producing proof of work. What they're doing is basically doing a rat-a-tat-tat dance, uh, trying to find a, a hash in order to prove that you should trust us to mine a block. So it's literally just... Uh, it's like the peacock's tail a little bit. Like, hey, I'm beautiful. Want proof? Like, ta-da! Uh, so that's what your ASICs do. <clears throat> um, once we reconcile a block, so we receive a transaction, once we validated that it is a coin that you have the right to spend and that it breaks no rules on the network, we collect them into a, a tranche that we call blocks, and we sign those blocks with our pool's uh, key and say, okay, we, we're attesting with our hash power that this is a valid block of transactions, and we would ask that if you agree, please extend our block by building on our block. Uh, if accepted, we are paid the subsidy, which at the moment is 6.25 Bitcoins per block, plus any transaction fees, which if there's 10 transactions, it's like some infinitesimal fraction of a penny. But if it's a massive block full of millions and millions of transactions, it's dollars, tens of dollars, hundreds of dollars. Depends what depends who paid what, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we get those transaction fees, and that's that's what we love. That's where the juice is. Uh, Bitcoin network um, is a dist uh, distributed system. So Gorilla Pool, my company, is one of a few. Uh, we are sharing blocks and information across this network. Our nodes are doing that validation. Then we have a pool, which is like an overlay network on top of, uh, basically lets other people participate. So if you wanted to buy one ASIC or 100 ASICs or 1,000 ASICs and mine with us as a collective. Well, the pool is the thing that collects it. Uh, it's basically just a way to collectivize our hash power and all be kind of a team. Uh, and our hashing operation is global. Here's me in a <laughs> mobile data center. Uh, these essentially look like a shipping container uh, because frankly, most of them are shipping containers full of racking, but they are purpose-built uh, full of networking equipment and electrical equipment, uh, crazy, they're crazy loud. Uh, if, if this thing was full, this one uh, looks like a mid-sized unit, so it'd be like 150 ASIC computers. If we were screaming at the top of our lungs at each other and they were all running, we wouldn't hear anything. It is extremely loud. Um, it's also very, very hot. Um, but they sit uh, anywhere because they're not data intensive. It's just looking for hashing. So uh, we literally just get a hash table and we guess and check, just brute forcing. And um, you can do that basically anywhere. So we look for the cheapest power we can possibly find and do that work with a thing that we dropped in the middle of nowhere and we're broadcasting via, in many cases, a GSM cell signal from the middle of nowhere to uh, let people know. Now, on the flip side, uh, this is not actually what our data center looks like. It's like an absurd AI version of what I want it to look like in a few years. But um, those are huge computers. These are the most powerful servers in the world, because for us, I need to be able to validate a million transactions and 10 million transactions and a billion transactions inside of a 10 minute period, or else my block just won't be a candidate to be written on the network. So I have every incentive to build more and more and more powerful compute so that I can build more and more 
uh, large block so that I can get paid more and more money, which everybody else is trying to do in the space too, which is why capitalism drives down prices. And then, you know, we can do a billion transactions for the same cost that, you know, three years ago, it would have cost to do a million transactions. And, you know, the world, the world loses friction because of our competition. So uh, we are a global company. We have offices on three continents. Uh, they're not all owned entirely by Gorilla Pool, but we've got really good partnerships in uh, mainland China, Hong Kong, Singapore. Uh, we do have a European contingent, uh, but we're shipping stuff. Most of the stuff is manufactured in China or Malaysia uh, and ends up being shipped uh, to North America. I won't do business in, uh, a lot of people were doing business in Russia and Ukraine until two years ago. And a lot of people lost a lot of their computers behind uh, enemy lines, and that's been a lot of trouble, so we don't do any of that. Um, so we do uh, basically almost all U.S. We have one site in Canada. Uh, we're considering a South American operation, but I kind of have the same, like, well, how do, how do I sue you if, uh, if my stuff disappears? <laughs> so right now we're very happy to be in the United States and Canada uh, with our hashing operations, um, and here's, here's where some of them are. So we have data centers in Texas and Florida. We have hashing operations. Uh, up there in Quebec, uh, as well as uh, North Carolina and Washington State. We also just opened uh, in Iowa uh, about a month ago, so it's not on this deck, but uh, we're really excited about Iowa. A lot of hydropower out there for cheap, uh, bumping off the Mississippi River, and we're pretty excited about it. Uh, this is what the inside of one of these mobile data centers looks like for hashing. Uh, we do also have uh, data operations on the other side. Uh, of the Atlantic for the sake of propagating blocks and transactions for people. So if you're trying to broadcast to a node and your business is in Lithuania, like I can give you direct IP access to our Finland uh, data center so that you know you don't have any of those latency problems. You're not trying to send it to uh, Miami, for example. So if you have an extremely high velocity data intensive application where it really, really matters, uh, we can give you direct API access. Uh, to, to a data center that makes sense for you. Uh, so now what? <laughs> um, now, keep talking about big nodes, right? Uh, big data centers and all this stuff. Well, the reason people want to run stuff out of their own home is they want to validate everything themselves. They want to run their own business in their own stack, on their own computer, in their own house, because they can control everything. But that doesn't work at scale. Uh, this is why people no longer run a, a server in, you know, an email server in their own house. Almost everybody outsources this to Google at this point because it just works really, really well. Um, we have created our version of like Gmail, uh, but for the blockchain, it's called Jungle Bus. So what we do is we ingest all of this information as it's coming at extremely high velocity across the blockchain, and we expose a bunch of APIs uh, for anybody that wants that data that you can subscribe to. So you don't care about billions of people's work, you care about your company's assets or your company's money or whatever. And so you can just subscribe to that small subset. You would pay us a small fee to have a mainline API that is for you that just gives you access to your company's blockchain data. Um, nobody has built a tool like this because every other blockchain is like 10 years behind and they're just sitting there saying, we'll just run your own node or use an Ethereum. I think they'll use Infura. Uh, or whatever else. So we're, we're creating a tool that allows you to maintain your own data for your own company, but without having to run a full node. Like, let me run a giant mining operation, you be my customer, okay? Um, why? So if you use transactions and script in order to deploy applications that are not internet applications, like running in no Web2 aspect of the internet, if you want to run completely from the blockchain, so everything, all of your data, your images, your, your HTML and CSS files, even your DNS records, all of the stuff that needs to be resolved for somebody to do business with your company can be served from a mining operation instead of using an ISP. So you don't have to be DigitalOcean's customer or AWS's customer or any of these things. You can deploy your entire company's e-commerce anything over Bitcoin and you become a Jungle Bus customer and you are no longer using the internet, you are using a Bitcoin powered metanet, which means every bit of data can be monetized. It can be natively encrypted or decrypted based on uh, whatever key management that you need for your application security. 
There's no more man in the middle attacks. There's no, there's no more all kinds of things because you are using Bitcoin's backbone as the backbone of your company. So we are literally seeking to replace the entire internet uh, with our plucky little startup. <laughs> uh, how do you send transactions to Bitcoin? This is a little bit complicated unless you're a, a software engineer or something, but uh, this is the Arc transaction engine. We're one of two companies on Earth that uses Arc. Uh, basically, Arc lets you send millions or billions of transactions. So if your application is extremely data heavy, uh, some people tell you, well, you got to run your own node or you got to do all this other stuff. Well, the infrastructure for Jungle Bus is to feed information back out. This is to digest information into our mining company. So if you want to do business with Gorilla Pool, you have Gorilla Pool in the center, you have Arc on the client side, and you have Jungle Bus on the on the customer side, essentially. So in and out, Arc, um, Arc is a very powerful tool for sending transactions uh, into our pool specifically if you want to do business with us and have us serve your business needs uh, essentially as an ISP. When, I, when people ask what I do, I tell people I'm a Web3 ISP. And you get people look at me and say, well, what the hell does that mean? And I say, well, uh, people would have called this a, a Bitcoin miner, but Bitcoin mining is a, is a weird bridge era in, in commerce. You are going to think of me in 10 years as you know, Comcast, Verizon, Vodafone, T-Mobile, like the kind of people who when you move to a new place or whatever and say, okay, how do I connect? to the universe from this new place, like you check, okay, is it AT&T or is it Comcast? Like, who, who am I forced to do business with because they control all the infrastructure that I need to connect to to do business with all of my clients? That's gonna be us, okay? So nobody else seems to even care conceptually about building any of this stuff. So it's been pretty nice monopolizing this with uh, my, my five employees and partners. Um, this is some of our clientele. Uh, people connect to our infrastructure. We host stuff on our servers. If you have something that needs to be very close to our node or whatever else, we do service level agreements with anybody that needs special treatment. Uh, if you want to be um, you know, part of something really special, come talk to me. If you have a, a, a data heavy application that would really benefit from, from frictionless payments or like absurdly increased uh, data integrity, talk to me about these things. We would be very happy to help you. 